This is E14, day one, and we're learning here where the G may say J. So if you have a look at these words with an G in them, it's not saying gel, it's saying gel, because the E is making it say J. So we know that to make the G say J, it has to be followed by an E, an I, or a Y. So you could colour in those letters. If you can remember that when a G is followed by an E, an I, or a Y, that it makes a G say J, that's about 3,000 words that you won't have to learn. Now down the bottom here we've got some just tricky words that um, we put in because there are not a lot of words where we use the, the G for the J sound. Um, we do have germ as another one. I didn't colour that one in. I'm going to colour that one too. And then we've got the words here. E-R-E, where, with E-R-E in it, and there, with E-R-E in it. This one, last one is the word said. It's a bit tricky because um, it's of the way we say it. It comes from the word say. But we can't say, said, so we've changed it. So this is, should we should say said, um, but it, we've changed the pronunciation of it so it says said. So you have to know that it is S-A-I-D. Okay, let's have a look at these, the meanings of these words. So gel you would know is something that you put in your hair to stop your hair moving, it holds it in place. A gem is a precious stone. A gent indicates that it's a male, a man, or a gentleman. Um, so if you're going to the toilets and you're a boy, you'd look for the gents' toilets, the male toilets. Gist is where you get the idea of something. A gym is where you might go for exercise, or your parents might go for exercise. If you go to um, a gymnastics, you're probably learning how to do some cartwheels and handstands and things like that. A germ is something that can make us quite sick, so we've got to make sure we wash our hands very carefully. Here means it's right where we are. Um, where tells us where something might be, so we might have to work out which direction and which to go. There, this there means the place. Go over there. It means the place that we're at. And we've already discussed said. It's the past tense of say. Right, let's read those words, sound them and spell them and write them three times. Don't forget to get your little cover card. So we've got gel. J -e -u. J -e -u. J -e -u. G E L. G E L. G E L. Cover it and write it three times. You can finish the rest of that page on your own. This is E14, day two, and we're looking at where the G says J, and also most, some of the most common words that we need to be able to spell. So you will remember, hopefully, that if we have uh, an E, I, or Y with a G before it, the G is not going to say G, it's going to say J. So have a listen to these words. We've got gel, gem, gent, gist, gym, and germ. So in all of those words, we've got either the G, E, which I want you to colour, the G, I, or the G, Y. And then the next set of words are most common words. If there is a common element here, we've got E-R-E, E-R-E, E-R-E. And the last one, we've got the A-I in the middle of it. Usually A-I says A, but we've changed the way we say this word. Rather than it saying said, we say said. So we're giving it an X sound, which is a little bit unusual. If you say the word where, where, you'll notice there's air after the W, so that tells us to put in an H. Whereas when you say the word were, 
were, there's no air after the W, so we don't have a, an H. So this is where, meaning the place where. Um, so go through and colour in all of those um, special letters in those words, those sounds. And then you've got to read them, sound them, spell them and write them. So you're going to go gel, j e u l, j e u l, j e u l, g e l, g e l, g e l. Then you're going to cover it and write it once. You can do the rest of those on your own. Down here it says use g e, g i or g y to finish the words and match to the picture. So it's got to be a word that ends with NT, there it is, you need to put the GE in there and then you have to draw a line to the picture that represents JET, J -E -N -T. Here we've got to finish the word, so you're just going, doing the H and then adding the ERE -E here. You can finish off these ones on your own. This says, fill in the gaps with the missing list words. Let's read these sentences together. My pop something, I was the best gymnast. My pop said I was the best gymnast. Let's see. I want to go, mmm. That something told us, mmm, to go. I found up in this box. I have got in my hair. We have got the mm of what he said. So just is a bit of a tricky word. It means the idea. So that would be the one to go in there. We got the gist, the idea of what he said. Quite a tricky word. Okay, off you go. This is E14, day three, and we're revising when the G says J. So we know that G won't say G if it's followed by an E, an I, or a Y. So when we see a G before an E, an I, or a Y, we know that it's going to say J. So that's about 3,000 words that you won't have to learn if you can remember that a G followed by an E, I or Y makes the G say J. So let's read these words. We've got J, E, U, Gel, J, E, M, Gem, J, E, N, T, Gent, J, It's, T, Gist, J, I, M, Jim, J, E, M, Germ, P, E, A, P, E, F, E, S, E, D. So these are common words that you need to be able to spell. So we've put them in there for you. So if you have a look at all these, we've got either G, E, G, E, G, I, G, Y, G, E. And they're all making the G sound J. And in these words, the common thing is here that we've got E, R, E, E, R, E, E, R, E. And instead, we're using the AI in the middle of a word. We should say said, but for some reason we've changed it to say said. So the AI is making it sound, but it's the only time it ever does. All right, so let's have a look at what we have to do today on this page. You know that once you've highlighted all that, you've got to go back and read it, sound it, spell it, and copy it. So you're going to go j e u g e l, and you're going to cover it and then write the word in. Down here you're doing verb families, so you can gel your hair and you can say something, so they're things we can do, so they're verbs. Here we're going to add the S to the verb, um, here we're adding the ing and here we're adding the ed, so we might go gel, gels, adding the S, gelling and gelled there. Say, says, we tend to say says, but we should probably say says, saying, said. So we change the whole word when we change, go from say to said. So be very careful of that one. The gym, these are plural, so a gym and a gem are both nouns. So we could have one of them or we could have lots of them. If we have lots of them, we usually add an S to the end of the base word. So we've got the gym, many gyms. 
at gym and chest full of gems. Combine to make new words. So if you join gym and this together, take out the plus sign, you end up with the word gymnast. It means someone who does a lot of gym. Probably very good at it. Everywhere makes the word everywhere. Gent all makes the word gentle. Down here you have to write in the correct there or there. Now the big hint for this is if you're talking about the word there and it's got an I in it, you might be saying their car or their house or their dog. Just think of this as a little person, it might help you. It says that the next word belongs to them. It is their car, their house, their dog. So that might help you to get this right. Mum said there were no eggs left. So that there would have to be this one. There were none left. You can't say were belong to there. So it doesn't belong to this person here. Were can't belong to a person. I like their house. Can a house belong to someone? Yes, it can. So it would be this there. We went over there. The place there is T-H-R-E. Could two belong to there? No, so it couldn't be that one. It would have to be this one. We went over there to see their you. A you is a female sheep. Um, could a you belong to someone? Yes, it could. It's, it belongs to them. It is their you. So it would be this there. So you can fill in the missing words after you've highlighted them. Off you go.